Okay, awesome. Uh, so, how are we all doing? Decent? Hmm? Yeah? All right. We're almost done. The enterprise people are going to come up. They're going to kick ass for business. Um, and um, so, but before that, I'm going to give a super short talk on some React stuff um, because a lot of us in the room, who's using React right now? Yeah, look at that. That's a lot of people right there. Um, so just some recommendations. Maybe we can all get on the same page with uh, Ethereum React stuff, um, uh, make some useful recommendations, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, just helpful, helpful stuff. Um, so but before that, I have to do this because, um, you know, we got to do it. Uh, I, brought, I brought this. Yeah? We all see this? That's a, that's a hard fork. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah? All right. Come on. We, we survived this. We did it. We, we did it. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, that was just like some stuff yeah, I wanted to do. Okay. Um, so let's see if it works. Uh, does it work? Uh, oh, maybe the other way. Yeah. No? Oh, we're good? Okay, good. Uh, so um, I'm building this all into a boilerplate. Uh, it's not a framework, uh, all these recommendations. So if you like frameworks, use uh, Truffle or Embark and those things. This is just a uh, configured boilerplate, so uh, some good defaults, um, but nothing, um, nothing you can't change. Uh, very small components and things like that. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, it's all defaults. Um, okay, so uh, just to give you an overview of kind of some of the stuff that's going to be inside of this boilerplate, of which I'm going to give to everyone for free. Um, so contract scaffolding, so you'll be able to off the command line just go, okay, I want a new contract, name it something, get a solidity file, and it tests the contracts in two languages, uh, so in JavaScript and in solidity. Uh, so, uh, and as well, it enforces that so that you cannot upload it to GitHub until you either uh, remove the test or uh, actually written it. So you have to do either one. Um, and uh, as well, um, things like wallet generation and identity and fauceting are done during the install. And the whole point of this is so that if somebody comes to Ethereum and they're like, oh, you know, I want to build a dApp, um, they can download it and hit and basically run install. Everything gets configured properly. They don't need to configure anything else. It all just runs. It runs offline. Uh, the wallet is generated and fauceted if it can be. Um, and, um, and then you hit NPM start and everything just runs on a test RPC instance. Um, and the contracts are deployed uh, and the interface is configured properly. So the idea being that making this whole thing really simple. Um, it runs without uh, internet, uh, so uh, as well, um, it runs without using a node architecture. So I've actually, by default, added things like block apps um, and Infura, uh, so that you don't even need to run any nodes. Um, you can just deploy right away. Um, so uh, for the user interface stuff uh, for this, um, I'm using Max's React uh, boilerplate. I don't know if any of you have seen it. Uh, it is amazing. Um, and uh, as well, uh, things like multi-environment awareness. Um, prices are listed in USD first, with uh, Ether listed second, uh, so that you can get, so that new users can get sort of a value uh, feel for the prices that are being listed inside the DAP, uh, and then they can get the actual solid Ether price below. Um, basic multi-contract examples, so uh, a registry and a factory and an example, uh, configured in a complex deployment setting. Um, and, uh, and as I said before, offline first. So NPM start, everything runs. Um, you don't need to think about configuring it with any sort of infrastructure or network. Um, and uh, so one thing that, um, that I've noticed uh, over the past little while is that there's um, sort of a data model revelation going on with uh, the front end world uh, with Redux. Um, and uh, this sort of revelation is, is very similar to that of the blockchain space um, because we're figuring out that good state management in the application layer and in our global computer uh, seems to be really, really uh, effective for humans to build really cool things. Um, and it really just comes down to good data management. Um, so uh, it's just uh, an interesting thought uh, as I've been working with this stuff for a while. So this is the React architecture that I'm using. It's called React Boilerplate. It's available at that link there. I highly recommend you use or just analyze this boilerplate uh, when you are building dApps. Um, it's fantastic. It's built to scale. And uh, it has something like, it's almost at 10,000 stars on GitHub. So it's pretty awesome. And Max is really cool. 
um, Max uh, was going to allow me to sleep on his couch in Vienna, but turns out he was in Italy or something. And with it's on Twitter, you'll see it's a sad, it's a sad moment when we couldn't meet. Um, uh, so, um, so some components of Node in the boilerplate: um, post CSS, uh, it's module, uh, modular CSS. Um, that's uh, uh, on the side there. You're seeing a Redux Saga example. Uh, using the new ES6 function generators and yield uh, uh, params, uh, not params, uh, yield uh, flag there, and then as well, um, the main uh, components to manage state and data are Redux, um, immutable JS, uh, reselect for selecting things out of state, and uh, and Redux sagas. Um, so I highly recommend you either take a look at this, see how they're built, or just use it yourself. Um, it's a fantastic way to manage data on the application side. Uh, the application layer, and then as well, I18N support uh, for internationalization, uh, so we can support things like the Chinese language and the English language, uh, and as well, uh, Redux router, uh, and things like that. Uh, on the Ethereum integration side, uh, of course, the Web3 object, um, I've built a deployment utility that I'll show you, which is very much like Webpack, um, called ETH Deploy, um, and it's highly config uh, configurable, very unopinionated, uh, and it just does deployment, so it's kind of uh, an interesting utility for this sort of stuff. Um, I'm using Dapple uh, to do uh, Solidity unit testing. Uh, I'm using Solium to do Solidity linting, because that exists now. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, it's not great. Some, some things don't work, but you got to hand it to, uh, I actually forget his name, uh, who wrote it, uh, because it is really cool. Uh, Light Wallet, uh, which is generated when you install the boilerplate, but you can also run a generation command to generate multiple wallets if you want. Um, and once again, the whole idea here is that you download this boilerplate and you see a full Ethereum uh, dApp that's properly architected to scale, highly configured, tests in multiple languages, has great contract examples, can deploy to multiple environments at once, um, and it's all done for you for free. Um, and it's just to make Ethereum really easy for someone new to come along and say, oh, okay, that's the architecture, that's what it looks like, and these are some recommendations. Um, and test RPC and so forth. So um, uh, this is the scaffolding tool that's built in, so you can just run npm run generate, and you can scaffold uh, things like components uh, for React, routers, uh, language, uh, adding additional languages, and then adding things like a contract. Uh, so I've added uh, basically contract scaffolding. Um, and then uh, on the wallet generation and management side, you see something like this. Um, and uh, uh, basically typing in a passphrase and using uh, the light wallet uh, utility. Um, and that generates a nice wallet, but it does it outside of the repository because we don't want everyone uploading 1,000 wallet files uh, to GitHub, which would be a real shame. Um, and, uh, and so this is uh, eat deploy here. Um, uh, it's a module I'm still working on and I'm still architecting, um, but you can see it on, on GitHub. Uh, and basically, uh, it's very much like Webpack, so simplifying inputs to outputs, uh, heavily following the Unix philosophy, and making contract deployment very much like a Webpack um, sort of packagement, uh, uh, packaging. Uh, so you can see here that um, uh, on the entry, you're going to input uh, your environments, things like test RPC, whatever you like. Uh, and the classes to that. Um, this doesn't do building, it's just for deployment. Uh, and the output will be a single environment, potentially a path, things like that. Um, you'll have a module here to do things like um, uh, uh, complex contract scheduling. Um, and once again, these are all very dumb modules, but they do a very specific thing. Um, so um, this is the dual layer contract testing. Uh, so you can see on the left, we have the Dapple test, uh, and on the right, we have a chi Ethereum test. Uh, chi Ethereum is this awesome, very light um, uh, tool to test contracts, um, and that's literally deploying it, and then from there, you can actually do one-line tests and test all of the methods um, in a very simple fashion. Um, so this gets written right away uh, when you uh, scaffold contracts, uh, and it gets enforced right away, and it makes you basically uh, write all your tests for your contracts. Um, and that gets packaged in with the rest of the DAP architecture. Um, and, uh, and that's what it looks like as it's passing. So you can see the DAPL test on the top and the Chi-Ethereum test on the bottom. Uh, then as well, uh, another concept I want to run by you is if you're accepting third-party content uh, into your DAP, that means you're exposed to a ton of vulnerabilities, um, and mainly cross-site script injection, 
uh, which someone could inject uh, some JavaScript into your DAP and then do things like change the, uh, all the addresses so that, you know, something like I send $1,000 to some guy's wallet versus something else. Uh, and so uh, to prevent that, I highly recommend you use a package called uh, XSS, uh, which is anti-script injection package. Um, things like spoofing as well. So many people can just uh, take all your code, host your DAP, and then um, spoof it um, and change all the addresses once again or do something very low level. Uh, easy attack vector. So with that, I recommend you do solid communication channels uh, and you have a registry of all the people who have spoofed your DAP and where it is so that your users can have some kind of awareness of where the spoof DAPs are because there's really not much you can do. Um, oh, sorry, did I go back? Do, do, do. Okay. Um, okay, how are we doing so far? Pretty good? Yeah. yeah? Uh, am I done? Yeah, yeah? Okay. Anyway, um, so I'm basically done, but follow the Unix philosophy is my last point. <laughs> and uh, as well, um, that's where you can get all of this stuff um, to make building a DAP very, very easy and super scalable um, and doing it really quickly. So thank you. Thank you, Nick. You packed it in. It's great.